All right, Enrico is back, so you can ask. <laughs> okay. So anyway, the discussion will be open, but maybe I start with uh, some uh, some question on my own. So let's see how it goes. Um, so Enrico, are, are you there? I have a question for you. Uh, yeah, yes. Sorry, okay. Now it's a, it's a, it's a provocative question maybe to some extent, but um, you and, uh, uh, I mean, I, I, I just take you because you gave a talk, but uh, going back to the reason why we like uh, uh, this bootstrapping, um, so naively, the, the, the way sometimes it is presented is not completely obvious uh, that uh, uh, we want to go in this direction because uh, you say, for example, uh, I instead of uh, looking at the time uh, evolution, I prefer just to define things on the boundary. On the other hand, one could argue that uh, at the end in cosmology, we want to understand uh, how things uh, evolve in time. Uh, so it, you know, usually we want to, I mean, usually, we, we, we say the opposite, you know, that we want to take something measured at a certain time to reconstruct what happened in the, in the past. So, uh, can you argue about the general uh, motivation, both for the boostless and uh, not boostless uh, bootstrap? Uh, yes, yes, I'd be happy to. So I'll, uh... And also other colleagues that can... Uh... Yeah, yeah, I think other people will, will, will bring in, but I think it's, it's a great question. And so I'm going to make a few points, starting from point number zero. I don't think it has to be an either or. I think it's great to have such a powerful machinery of field theory that we can ask everything and do the calculation in in for complicated models away from scale invariance, etc. So I'm not saying we should forget about it, but I'm saying that perhaps certain things are more transparent when expressed in terms of observable rather than in terms of a specific uh, bulk Lagrangian. So let me give uh, a few concrete examples. Example number one, which is related to actually your work. Uh, when you show that certain correlators, for example, gamma cube to uh, leading order in derivatives at the level of two derivatives cannot be changed away from what Maldacena does, you guys do some serious calculations about field redefinitions that vanish at the boundary, and then you keep track of all of this, uh, I don't know how many interactions, uh, and then you can prove this. However, it seems that that's a statement that at the level of the observable itself should not require doing that work. All of those field redefinitions have to do with the fact that there is a physical process, and that physical process cannot be described in field theory in a unique way, but there is a degeneracy of field theory model that describes the same physical process. When you do amplitude, there is no unique way to associate to an interaction of particles a certain operator in the Lagrangian, because uh, there are field redefinitions, ambiguities. And in terms of correlator theory, there are field redefinition ambiguities, but now the field redefinition are those that vanish at the boundary. So it seems it's unnecessary work to go through that degeneracy when actually, what you want to compute is, in, is independent of those field redefinitions. This is one concrete example. Second point that I wanted to make is the example of general principles and unitarity is one of them. Suppose I asked you uh, what is the class of theory, the class of correlators that you expect from unitary theories. In order to answer that type of question, you would have to write down all possible unitary Lagrangians with all possible interactions and do all possible calculations, and you would find a clever way of doing it, but it would be some amount of work. Well, at the end, what you would get out is that every contact interaction, there is this simple format that we have derived, psi, psi plus psi star equals zero. Super simple. You can derive it with much less work, and it is extremely general to all ordering derivatives and any number of fields. That's another example in which there are two equally uh, justified approaches, it just certain things are easier to see from one point of view than they are from the other. There are other questions that in field theory are much more natural to ask. If you start doing deviation from the sitter, deviation from scale invariance, your mode function are God knows what. You start oscillations in the potential, I don't think that from the boundary we will be able to do very much. So there I don't think a boundary perspective is very useful. Um, 
So these are my, my points on how I think uh, symmetries perhaps are an, another point, but okay, I'm gonna stop my long answers and maybe other people want to mention <laughs> it's other It's funny people. because it, 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 it looked like the, the question was prepared, but uh, it was not, no? So you were very ready to answer. The questions. <laughs> <laughs> but, uh, I, I think it's a great question. I mean, you, why, why should you be wasting your time to do that? But I think there are some good answers. Mm -hmm. So does anybody have uh, something to add? Or? Yeah, maybe I can add something. Um, mm -hmm. I think from, uh, if, if you try to do it explicitly, let's say from the time evolution perspective, the best you can hope to do is some perturbative computations. But if you try to do it uh, say from the bounded perspective, you could have to get uh, completely non perturbative results by solving the bootstrap equations. And then if I want to go, uh, let's say, perhaps more conceptual issues, we do expect gravity to be graphic in all, in all instances. So that would be the manifestation of holography for, for cosmology. Okay. Anybody wants to add? Can I ask something? Yeah, please. Uh, please can I, in yeah. answer to Paolo, say uh, one sentence, probably? If okay. Okay. Let's start with Sandra, then we go to Gonzalo. Yeah. Sorry. So I, I don't know. It's a very short answer, but uh, I mean, given that uh, I mean, in flatter space, we know that GR and Young Mills, which for a long time were very mysterious theories, we know that from an unshell perspective, they are actually very simple. They are unshell constructible only by knowing the cubic vertices that uh, they are fixed by Lorentz invariance, you can just construct all the uh, all the n particle amplitudes. Given that we know that fact about nature, I think it would be surprising actually to ask this question. That what I mean, it, it would be very natural to to ask the similar questions for cosmology. Actually, it should have been probably asked a decade ago. But at the same time that uh, Nima and uh, uh, Paolo Benincasa and other colleagues were developing these tools for scattering amplitudes, you could ask the similar questions in the context of cosmology, I think. Mm -hmm. Gonzalo, you wanted to say something? Yeah, so my, my question will be to the people doing bootstrap, uh, what will be the biggest objection they, they see against the, that program? I mean, uh, where, where, uh, where it could fail or, or which situations uh, could not uh, be, uh, you know, encapsulated by, by this program, do, do you see any, um, you know, uh, big objection? You will say, okay, uh, yeah, that's the limit to, to this. Um, well, maybe I can say a word or two, uh, but uh, I think that if you have big departures, if you if you don't have a little bit of symmetry at your disposal, it'll probably be hard to make progress, and then probably these in-in uh, type of computations are the way to go. Uh, I think it's actually pretty cool that uh, that uh, Enrico and uh, and uh, people in Cambridge were able to make so much progress by relaxing boosts and getting these uh, P of X results of, of, of Zingang and uh, like in just a couple lines. I, I thought that that was uh, beyond reach, but it's not. But things like uh, I don't know if you have like a field space with rapid turns and things like that, that leave like very specific features. Uh, that, that seems, I actually have no idea how to do that from, from this bootstrap perspective. And they are okay, interesting we'll, on their own, right? And uh, they would, will, that, will that be uh, an objective, objective for the future or do you just see, okay, that's really not a, a I something think I think a, it's, it's super interesting, but I, I don't know what the, yeah, I just don't don't understand conceptually what one would need to do. Yeah, I had I had a similar question based on similar interest, I guess, as, as Gonzalo. I mean, as a bootstrap expert, sort of about I try to think about it. But uh, I mean, in 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 if you look at the similar situation in quasi single field inflation setup, Shingong um, and everybody they they use they, I mean they split the Hamiltonian, which is quadratic, into a into a free one plus small interactions. But if you but you can solve that. I mean, the power spectrum with with a with a full nonlinear. I mean, with a coupling which is of order one or large. Um, and numerically, this can be done. Simply analytically, it's 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 harder. Um, so all the work on the bootstrap is made on uh, on the knowledge that okay, we know the density mode functions, and we don't have analytical solutions. Well, mostly. Um, 
So, I mean, is there any hope? I don't know if other people thought. I'm, I'm just rephrasing the question. But. I think one key part in this question is that uh, um, there, there can be also some internal symmetries in the for the uh, internal space, right? And uh, this uh, internal symmetries in the scattering amplitudes would give you some interesting results for the flat space. So I don't know the answer, but uh, I think for cosmology, maybe something similar would happen as well. And uh, in some cases, maybe it will just correspond to what we study about multi-field inflation with turning trajectories. Just one possibility. I wanted to give my two cents as well on this couple of questions by Gonzalo and Sebastian, and perhaps stepping back a little bit, but I think one fact is that um, the type of questions that are natural depend on the formalism that you have. If your formalism is uh, about um, writing down Lagrangians, some of the natural questions you might come up with is which way does the field trajectory curve? Uh, what is the geometry of the compact space? And questions that are related to the field theory description. Well, there might be other questions that feel less uh, natural from that point of view, but are more natural from a boundary perspective. So in, in some sense, I would say that there are shortcomings in, in trying to do it on the boundary and certain things are very easy to answer in the boundary and certain things are going to be very easy to answer in the bulk. And because we have spent so much time only thinking about the bulk, there are still some very low hanging fruit on the boundary that I think are worth understanding. At some point, as Guy is saying, you're going to get to a point in which uh, certain questions uh, like how do you compute the bispectrum for features uh, in the potential, which is a completely numerical work, it's probably not worth the effort to understand on the boundary because it's not a natural question. But there are natural questions on the boundary. This one of unitarity, I think, is just an example. It's something which is so clearly stated at the level of the boundary and so unclearly formulated at the level of the bulk. What is unitarity? If I give you a correlator, how do you know it's unitary? It's, it's I, can I ask uh, something about this point? When, when you emphasize a lot unitarity, should, should I really think about it being single field versus multi field? You are not really considering some non unitary theory, you are just asking whether restricting to the zeta sector would give me unitary answers or not, or, or you are really thinking about non-unitary evolution. Sorry. I mean, I don't even know what that means, to be honest, but. So, that, so the, the, the relations that we derived about unit, you're saying that you don't expect unitarity to be violated, so it's not worth knowing its consequences? No, no, I think it's worse, but I, I, I'm saying the way I should think about it is probably that that's the, that's the implications of being single, having single degree of freedom, not re really having unitarity. Uh, the relation that we, we get has nothing to do with single field, the, the cosmological optical theorem. That's valid for an arbitrary number of fields. Well, when you write the four point function factorizes uh, in terms of three point function, if you have a second field, then that factorization can break down, right? Because there is an extra contribution to your four point function that comes from that extra field. Yeah, and I'm yeah, I'm so your sense. optical theorem would be violated if I have a second field. I mean, I wouldn't say violated. All the contributions from the cubic interaction should appear on the right hand side, not just the self interactions, but all interactions. So the, the psi four is equal to all possible psi threes, including the phi phi sigma if you have a different field. And our formula accounts for that. So now uh -huh. that formula is valid for multi field. In fact, it's valid for the graviton exchange. For sigma exchange, sigma can be conformally coupled. The exchanging one, different from the massless one external, is still valid. Sorry, Enrique, I didn't have time to read your paper yet, but uh, 
Is it right that the statement exists at the level of uh, three-level exchange of light particles, or is it more general than light? Meaning on you know not on the principle series, but uh, with uh, real scaling dimensions. Or do you have a statement more general than that? Uh, at the level of the exchange, we have it for the external being massless and the exchange one having uh, uh, either massless or conformally coupled. Okay. Do, do, do you have ideas how to, how to make a general statement? Yes, yes. I'll, I'll let also my collaborators answer this one, especially Sadra, but I'll say some words that the, the, the crucial point is understanding what are the analytical <coughs> properties of the mode functions. And those properties are particularly simple for conformally coupled fields and uh, massless fields because they're, uh, they're completely analytical, no branch points or branch cuts. But when you go away from that equals three or that equals two, that function uh, is more complicated. And so we have a hard time to understand how to do the analytic continuation properly. But I'll let Sadra discuss. No, just, yeah, the same. Uh, it's just that for, let's say, uh, the four point function of the conformally coupled scalar with a massive exchange, a generic is a massive particle with a spin or not. So you have uh, uh, branch cuts at the you know the ratio of the uh, moment of the uh, of the rectangle, so uh, that makes it messy when you want to analytically continue to negative energies, especially because of the branch cut that this has. So you want to evaluate the four-point function exactly on the branch cut, and that is of course not well defined. So you have to specify how you should approach this branch cut. So that was particularly not very challenging for contact terms because the branch cut could be just a branch cut in the KT, in the total energy pole. But in the four point function, you have a more uh, involved uh, analytical structure. So you could have branch cut in various uh, uh, variables. So it's just a matter of, so I, I expect that the same relation holds, but with some I epsilon prescriptions that are put in place uh, a bit extra care. But your, your approach is to somehow do it uh, diagram by diagram. Yeah, so right? it's, it's, which it's just okay, which is also like historically how in flat space uh, these relations were derived. But then in flat space, we have um, uh, well, optical theorem and other statements that are completely non perturbative, right? We understand how to derive them just based on symmetries and indeed some unitarity, unitarity in the sense of you know, positivity of norm in the Hilbert space. So do you have any idea, like it feels like, uh, I mean, if we play this analogies between uh, amplitudes and correlators, it feels like there should be a similar, I mean, it's not, that's not to criticize what you're doing. I mean, it's great to get some intuition from diagrams. But does anybody have any thoughts uh, how to, I don't know, proceed in a, in a non-perturbative way? Yeah, I, I mean, that, may that, even be useful. That, that, that's really an important drawback that our result is really, that's why we call it optical theorem rather than a generic consequence of locality and unitarity, which, I mean, in flat space, we know that it, it shows, uh, it, it, it is displayed at factorization on the pole, so on and so forth. But here, we, we really don't understand in beyond perturbation theory. I, actually, I don't know how to even start thinking about it, if you want to. I, I just feel like that the correlators are not the right objects to look into. So uh, from the correlators themselves, I, I don't know how uh, I should look for something, uh, something similar in flat space, some factorization theorem that goes beyond perturbation theory. What, what, if, not other, if not cosmological correlators, then No, I mean, some, I mean, there, there, there might be some simpler, simpler objects, like, I don't know, some, maybe a linear, a gigantic linear combination of different correlators that are like, easier to bootstrap. Um, but I think what we should be doing, uh, I'm much more optimistic than Sadra is, I think we should just write down the wave function, the full one, psi mm -hmm. square integrates to one, that's what unitarity is. The derivative of one is zero. So the, the, the time derivative of psi square has to be zero. You use the Schrodinger equation there to substitute for psi dot, and that's where the optical theorem has to come from. That should be the, the mother of all relations. We were not able to proceed that way because I think we are still at the infancy of our understanding of the analytical structure of this psi n. And when every time we try, we don't know which way we should go around. But it, it was just, the three of us trying for six months. I think with some more work, 
I have no doubt that we get a much more elegant derivation of this result than the one we have in the paper. And my expectation is that it will extend. To some extent, we are just, I mean, unitarity is such a simple UU dagger equals one or psi bar square equals one, that it should be possible to have a, a much more elegant non-perturbative derivation. But you're right, the one we have now is not so elegant or so non-perturbative. By the way, you have some statements, uh, if I understood from the talk that, that some of you gave, that uh, the whole statements for the, uh, whatever we call it, exponents in the wave function and the cosmological correlators itself, right? That I think you call B, uh, this, this capital B. So, so, so this optical theorem, it, it gets some, gives some implication for both, right? Did I understand it correctly? Because, I mean, there are two, there are two objects, right? There are, sometimes people also call correlators, but that are really uh, things that hit on the exponent of the wave function. And then there is what cosmologists call correlators, right? Which when you, Phi phi and uh, you know, like type side dagger. So, so you, you, is that right that your optical theorem it has some? It's a statement about both of this uh, set of objects. Yeah, it's naturally flat in terms of the wave function, but then you just take the real part and you get the correlator. So, but well, that, that's again to leading order imperturbation theory right? because beyond that you lose a simple relation between uh, mm -hmm. wave function and correlation functions. Well, also, I mean, it can happen to be pedantic that the wave function is normalized, but the moments aren't defined, after, you know, th that those diverge. Mm -hmm. it, well, it's related to, in this case, when we have this light fields that both of us, as we discussed a lot today, then, uh, I mean, it's not that something becomes not normalized, it's just uh, uh, to leading order in perturbation theory, you get some nonsense when you try to just uh, go from wave function to correlators, but then non-perturbatively, you get some well-defined, uh, well-defined moments, right? Well-defined well, well correlation that, functions. I mean, uh, no. Yeah. Yeah, no, I mean, I think in cosmology, what you're saying is the more relevant thing. I'm just saying mathematically, though, in principle, it can happen that, you know, the, the wave function is, is normalizable. The integral of psi squared is finite, but, the, but then if you start uh, integrating psi squared against some delta phi to the n, that stops, uh, that becomes divergent. Yeah, yeah, the Cauchy distribution is a famous example. Uh, that are having all the moments that are not uh, finite, even the two-point function could be non-finite, that can happen. My comment I on mean, that is that most of the examples that you can cook, cook up in which this happens, they're basically just a field definition that doesn't involve space-time of some Gaussian model. Like it's e to the minus phi square, and then you say phi is some nonlinear function of chi. Sure, it, it, it is, uh, it defies the treatment we have, but in some way we know how to deal with that. We deal with a Gaussian and then we do the field redefinition. Cases in which you actually have some space time dependent uh, derivatives and these two fields couple in a complicated way, we have very little leverage on. Right, I mean, now that we're talking about it, it seems like this um, hyperbolic field space case where it's, the tail is really heavy might even be an example of this. <laughs> I mean, um, yes. yeah, so, so that, but it's still calculable at the level of the wave function squared, which is what you wanted, Enrico. Hmm. So would you say so that that is what the definition, basically, phi is some linear function of chi, and that's what the, the I mean, the, there is a space time doesn't enter, the spatial derivative x, y, it's more, more at the level of uh, the average of value of phi. All the interactions are local, like uh, hyper local, if you want. They have no derivative whatsoever, or not. Sorry, Good question for you, right? Is that for me? Yes, um, I think so. <laughs> okay, sorry. <laughs> um, well, in the calculable example that I explained, um, uh, it, it was limited to a particular time window. The interaction was. Is this what you're asking me? The interaction was um, non-direct in space. Um, and for the formal question about the survival of the factorial, all we needed was the correlator at one point. Um, but then if you want to ask questions about, you know, how the field is distributed on a given scale, you would have to do some, uh, some averaging of the field and then see what that does to the 
the distribution. And I think, you know, that hasn't been fully worked out. But, but I, I yeah, I'm sorry, I, I'm not quite getting the gist of your question. The only thing I was saying to this discussion of isn't it all about correlators is there are, you know, there are these, ex, these cases where it's, you know, those are not defined, but the distribution is. Sorry, maybe Enrico, to understand, so your question was whether what Eva gets, uh, so the, the distribution of zeta, whether zeta of x can be um, written in terms uh, of a nonlinear function of an average scalar at the same point, this was your question. Yeah, and the reason why I'm asking that question is because it, it seems to me that we understand these cases because they are quantum mechanics because we're forgetting about the X dependence. There's just a phi and then a chi. And in that sense, uh, it, it's manageable. However, uh, when we're interesting about the, something like the consequences of unitarity in the boundary, we're really talking about the correlation as a function of the momenta. You have to take the norm of the momentum, put a minus in front. Uh, so it's really the spatial correlation as function of this spatial hyperplane that encodes the unit of the evolution and none of that information is really hard to get that information in any concrete models because in models that we have the only thing that we can capture are hyper local field redefinitions in which the, the correlation as a function of x and y and z is, is always trivial in the sense is always the one given by a local field redefinition phi equals chi gaussian plus chi gaussian squared like Chi Gaussian cube. So we are losing track of that as a function of axis and y as I move these points around. That's where unitarity goes. And I cannot get that from just a one point distribution function. I really want the wave function for phi of k, one phi of k, two phi of k. Right, right. right. I, so that's, that's true, but there, sorry, there, there was one example that yeah. haven't calculated that. Um, so there is there is a that's sort of you know it, it's nonlinear because of yeah. the mix, but but since each sector was Gaussian, it was possible to calculate. Um, so that that has the the momentum dependence that you're talking about. Other, otherwise, I agree this one point distribution or you know ultra local result isn't isn't giving you what you want. Yeah, yeah, that's that's a very interesting model. So that, that would be useful to to look at to to go beyond correlators if we really have the the, the k dependence. So, but can I? Uh, so Leonardo and, and Victor they derived these uh, corrections to the Starobinsky formalism. I thought that they're incorporating the effects of gradients, right? So could yes, it be yes, that you can com you can compute uh, any, if you're powerful, <laughs> you can right, compute so anything you like. Like we showed how to keep track of some leading coordinate dependence. Uh, but, but could it be that you could leverage unitarity to say something without uh, being so powerful just by taking the leading order result? You can say something well, about subleading stuff. I, I, I thought a little bit, so uh, yeah, what can I say? So, so this equation that, that I think uh, Enrico is uh, leveraging on, uh, that the norm of the wave function is conserved uh, during time evolution, which is you know one manifestation of unitarity. Um, indeed, the, this equation sort of plays the way we derive the way Leonardo and I uh, derive um, uh, you know this uh, this correlation functions for the slight fields, which also works for any field. Um, uh, we we use this equation again, so it's sort of tempting to to see what's the implication of um, uh, of conservation of uh, probability density and uh, we, we looked a little bit at it and uh, well I couldn't you know find any any interesting concept it doesn't mean that one shouldn't look at it further um, I just want to point out that that it seems to me that well there, there are also different uh, implications of uh, uh, bulk unitarity uh, than this which well, again it, it could be all uh, related eventually uh, uh, but um, you see closer to what we do in uh, flat space uh, is is what what is what is sort of positivity in uh, say an optical theorem right well uh, okay well, one implication of unitarity in flat space right is that we um, we produce some state right 
and then we insert identity in some pages, right? And we, you know, and then we propagate this uh, the states uh, one by one in in our pages of choice, right? And then there is um, a positivity of a norm of a Hilbert space, right? And that places some constraints on uh, on what can show up in the in the optical theory, right? And this is a different statement uh, than uh, than uh, sort of hermicity of the Hamiltonian, right? And, uh, mm -hmm. and 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 to me, it seems that there should be some uh, that maybe more straightforward applications uh, for cosmological correlators will be uh, from the unitarity of this sort. But the well, cutting rule has a little bit of this, right? Because when you look at the right-hand side of their exchange formula, there's a product of three-point functions. Each one carries a G. So this G squared that you're talking about uh, is appearing, right? You, you don't, you're not wiring in crossing, which is uh, as, as T symmetry, but I, I, at least- at Yeah, least I'm not talking symmetry. about crossing yet. Yeah, I'm, I'm, yeah but, let's, let's just think about things. Right, but, but at the level of the exchange diagram, I think this, uh, this that you're bringing up- I, I agree, I just wanted to say that it's a different, it's a different equation in, uh, in, in principle. I mean, you can, you can formally consider a theory where the, uh, the wave function involves with some Hermitian Hamiltonian, uh, but there are negative norm states in the, in the, I mean, as a, as a as quantum mechanics, we can write down a toy model like this, right? And that will, it will conserve probability. Uh, it just, I mean, it's not even, pro, I mean, but the probability itself is not positive definite. That, that, that's all I'm saying, that it's not, uh, not the full, uh, uh, not the full, full like, even if we derive everything that's possible from that equation, I don't think it will be a full statement of unitarity. Right. But, uh, Right. Uh, the, uh, the, that's what I meant. I, I'm not trying to discourage to look for further consequences of that equation. I just wanted to say that that's not, uh, there is a, in principle a stronger constraint even in the bulk. Mm -hmm. I mean, we did attempt, following your suggestion, <laughs> I think we attempted a while ago, to understand what is a, a, a kallen lehmann representation at the cosmological level. So in particle mm -hmm. physics, it basically tells you that you can write two-point functions that have integrals of, uh, of densities that are positive by the, positive, uh, by the positive norm of the states. And one idea would be to do the same for cosmology. The only thing yes. that I managed to prove was that the power spectrum has to be positive. <laughs> <laughs> so, but that at the level of at the level of two point function that is done in some papers by uh, Don Marlow. Uh, there is like a series of papers. So he worked it out. It's it's not extremely easy to extract it. Right. From those there is papers by Marlow and Morrison. They like have five uh, of them. even Morrison. even earlier by Moskela, But I don't think anyone has done it for cosmology. The coordinates that we're used to in cosmology. Right? And what's it's their size? Well, they uh, have, they're, uh, yeah, they're, they're also, there are these papers by Maschella that for me even even harder to <laughs> parse through than model. But, uh, uh, but yeah, basically the statement, the level of two-point function, it's understood. Uh, but, uh, but I don't think it's understood at the level of, uh, uh, of more non-trivial uh, correlation. But, you know, two-point function is sort of too simple, right? We kind of know what it is and, and okay, it's positive <laughs> times some uh, dependence on the coordinate. Of course, there is a much more uh, non-trivial statement at the level of uh, 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 correlation functions that have um, uh, non-trivial dependence. And uh, well, I, I more or less know how to do it uh, for, uh, you know, for field theory uh, in, uh, in the sitter. So we, well, we, we have, we'll write, we're writing some paper with, with Lorenzo Di Pietro and Jota Kamat, so that, I don't know, in, in some amount of years will appear. And, uh, and, uh, and, 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 and then, uh, so this day, I, I, at least I, I think I know that they can be worked out the statements. But I don't know the answer to the following question, which, which I think somebody should know. So if we, if we care not about um, uh, field theory in the sitter space, but we really care about uh, cosmological correlators of, uh, Zeta or whatever cur curvature curvature fluctuation right things that we observe uh, you know so let's do scalar fluctuations first what are these objects from the boundary point of view these are objects these are correlation let, let me ask it's, it's not they don't live in any cft per se right because 
by definition, this, these are correlation functions of, uh, um, you know, something that's related to breaking of uh, the center invariance uh, or, or conformal invariance from the boundary point of view, right? So these are not objects in, the, in any CFT. These are all, like, what are these objects? Did, did anybody spell it out? Like at the level of the wave function, Juan spelled it out, right? That these are basically at the level of the wave function, these are uh, correlation functions of a trace of a stress tensor. So at least in some, you know, some vanilla single field floral inflation, uh, you, can, um, you can think of it as some conformal perturbation theory. You get some relevant operator. Uh, you get a stress, stress, uh, trace of a stress tensor that's proportional to this operator. And basically you're computing uh, correlation functions of trace of the stress tensor. But that's, that's, now we're talking about the wave function exponents. Okay, so now if we talk about the observables, the inflation correlation functions of the, what, what are they? Did, did, does anybody, is there any paper where it's written like these are objects, I don't know, in, in, in conformal perturbation theory they understood as this, or so these are correlation functions of, of that. Like, is, is there any statement even like this? Okay, because no, you, 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 you models that are completely explicit formulas, it's they're related to the objects you just discussed. So for zeta zeta, that's one over the two-point function of TT, for zeta 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 is related to the three-point functions. That's, that's, so that's the, no, that, but that's a completely perturbative statement, uh, I guess. Well, I'm sort of following up on my uh, previous discussion. I want, uh, I, I want, maybe that doesn't exist, but, but I'm asking. I want an object that is in principle uh, defined beyond perturbation theory. By this, I mean, you know, say in idea CFT, there is a CFT, okay, and we believe that that's defined non-perturbatively, we know what are the properties of the correlators non-perturbatively. I'm asking, I understand that at the level of, again, that is also in Juan's paper uh, on non gaussianities that uh, at, the, at the leading order, uh, at the interaction, it's the same thing, whether you have, uh, you just, as you say, you just invert the two-point function, you go from the wave function to correlation function. But we discussed even today a million, um, million many examples where this doesn't go through, right? Where the relation between uh, uh, correlation functions and uh, objects that appear in the wave function are very non-perturbative, right? So at, so at this point, it breaks down. I cannot just simply, simply state uh, what are the correlation functions of uh, zeta in terms of the uh, objects that appear in the wave function. So Victor, so, Victor, can I, sorry, can I um, ask you about this question um, a little more? So thinking of inflation at least and also the exit so that we observe things how we observe them in real in real life right um, yes yes okay so in other words inflation exited and we know that the um, let's say the uh, measure of degrees of freedom or entropy say is given by the Busso bound um, you know the number of degrees of freedom you infer from that increases a lot right so whatever as you exit um, so what, whatever theory it is, quote unquote, future boundary theory you're, you're talking about, it has to have that aspect built in, right? So um, uh, where does that fig figure in what you're, you're asking? I mean, it's yes, not yes, good. Well, uh, uh, no, you, you're right, of course, uh, that uh, when I say non-perturbatively well-defined, uh, the, the answer should be that that doesn't exist. But, but I think there are different, uh, uh, different uh, orders of magnitudes of the effect. Uh, oh, so I think oh, oh, oh. I think the effects you that you are talking about they are, yeah. they are they are more non perturbative than the, than the effects that I'm talking about. They're like exponential. You know, in principle, we, we can we can I think imagine a situation where uh, this is something exponentially uh, small in I don't know, n squared over n plus squared. No. Wait. So so Maybe we either. so but the scenario is we did we did exit from inflation so that the modes came back in and we're observing those. Right. Uh, yeah. So well. Uh, sorry. I, I I thought we all sort of by default agree that we uh, observing some correlation functions on the reheating surface and that okay there is also some transfer function that uh, uh, that we use but 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 I thought that in these bootstrap discussions. Uh, at least in this particular bootstrap discussion that we were having, I thought we were talking about some, you know, putative observer that just measures something directly on the reheating surface. Oh, okay, so the boundary you're talking about is a finite boundary like the reheating surface. Uh, yeah, yeah, which we, we, 
Yes, good. Okay, yes. And, and so you, we haven't quite exited, so we're sort of near enough the decider phase that you could talk about in terms of some CFT, that was your picture. I, I thought that that was the setup. I, I thought that when people talk about uh, cosmological bootstrap program, that's the setup. So that's why I didn't define it. But, uh, uh, but, but you're right that we should clarify it maybe for, for people who, well, for everybody. But yeah, that's, I, th I see Guillermo is, uh, yeah, is I agree. In approving this. Uh, so I think that that's the setup. But the I cost is maybe. Why you expect such a thing to exist? You can hope, but you, I don't see why you can expect it to exist. Well, I, I also said that I'm not sure if it exists, but I'm, I'm asking. I, 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 do, I, I do not know what the thing is. I was asking. I don't think anyone, anyone knows, Merdat, but the point is you gather theoretical no, data, you gather examples, and you try to infer. Yeah, yeah. sorry. We're, we're talking rules, about bootstrapping huh? something. So that's exactly my, I know, complaint. Yeah, yeah. I, 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 mean, I thought, I thought, you, I thought we were talking about bootstrapping the wave function until, until you started talking uh -huh. about this new object. OK. Okay, but uh, but wave function is not observable, so why are we bootstrapping it? Well, you integrate. Can I ask what, what is non perturbative? What do you mean by non perturbative? Um, well, I, I meant more like non perturbative in. Uh, there could be some coupling constants in the theory, like if we have some, uh, you know, extra sector that is. Um, uh, that is like when Eva discussed in her talk, right? So I want to be non perturbative in those coupling constants. So and we have lambda five the theory, theory, and I want to be non-perturbative in lambda. Okay. Or uh, to some extent, uh, I want to be, uh, well, again, you should shut me up if, if that's not an interesting question. Or to some extent, uh, you, you want to be to some level non-perturbative in H squared over M Planck squared. And let me tell you why. Uh, but not as non-perturbative as Eva brought up these questions about, you know, um, uh, entropy and uh, some uh, uh, course, you know, this finite number of degrees of freedom in the Cedar space, that kicks in, I think, at, at some more non-perturbative level in H squared over M plus squared. But there are some effects in H squared over M plus squared, again, related to infrared divergences uh, that, uh, that, you know, people bring up uh, once in a while that may be important for this question. Let me tell you why. Why, why I think, why my motivation is uh, uh, that it could be important, that it's not just some, you know, completely abstract uh, thought, but why why it's relevant uh, for uh, cosmological bootstrap? Well, if we want to talk about cosmological bootstrap as something you know also related to real world, so uh, you see if uh, if we take um, if we if we take idea CFT right, so so then we have a well defined set of uh, cosmological correlators and they and 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 they define some CFT. And we don't need any inflaton field to define it, right? We don't need any sort of field that in ADS evolves radial or whatever. In pure ADS space with a bunch of, we, we define it. In the same way, if we define a wave function in the Sitter space, uh, we can do the same thing. We don't need any inflaton. We can just take a bunch of quantum gravity in the Sitter space and for at least formally at the perturbative level, we can define this object, the wave function, right? Doesn't care about having any inflaton. Now, Let's take that object and try to go uh, to correlation functions. Take this side side dagger and sort of a bunch of field and they can integrate. Like if we don't have gravity in our model, uh, that should just go through. I mean, there is no reason for that not to go through. However, if we have gravity, that should fail. In some way, it should fail because in inflation, we consider completely different objects. Uh, we, in inflation, it's necessary, uh, or in the Sitter space, to compute correlation functions, it is necessary uh, to have an inflaton field, right, that defines for us a surface. This surface, again, it, it may look like it's, it's, it's future infinity, but I think physically it's a different surface because it's a reheating surface of some constant values of this inflaton field. So you see there is something uh, crucial in the presence of gravity in, in going from wave function to correlation function that makes it necessary uh, to have this inflaton field. And, and, I, mean, and I don't understand what it is. I, I think all of this is understood. The inflaton field corresponds to having a nearly marginal operator. And then you can use conformal perturbation theory, which is non-perturbative. And then uh, you can see that uh, the, the evolution in the inflaton is, is just uh, the, the relevant deformation from the CFT. And you can uh, get exactly the results you can get by doing okay, the Senna's computation from 2002. But, but then what we should be bootstrapping
something that, I mean, that's what I'm asking. Again, maybe it's understood by, by people. I just, I, I, I'm asking for a reference if you like. Like what, uh, uh, we should be bootstrapping some objects in, you know, deform, in, in, in conformity relation theory. No, I mean, that's theory that's called... This is absolutely true, yes. I mean, I think the bootstrap with the, the CFT is the starting point. Eventually, one would like to either do conformal perturbation theory using the results we got from the bootstrap from the CFT or uh, kind of taking soft limits from CFT correlators the way it was done in, in the more recent bootstrap papers. But, I mean, it's, in, it says the bootstrap is the first step, it's not uh, the last step. And so, so, Victor, are you saying that uh, you, with gravity, I mean, um, with gravity, we need the inflaton to exist? Uh, I, well, um, I, 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 I assume, well, I don't know if we need to, but inflation, we have it, right? So what we, we have it, yeah. Inflation. We, we have it. Okay. That's a different statement. Because, I mean, I was, you know, the, dual, the naive dual would be the metric has to do with the stress energy tensor and the f other fields have to do with other operators. Yeah. I, I, also, I also suspect, well, that's my, uh, I know, I, 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 I guess I stated this conjecture many times, but, uh, but I don't, uh, I still do not know if, if that's true. I, I think that uh, in the theater, we also need to have an inflaton and some uh, residual breaking of uh, some, uh, uh, some uh, lower bound on breaking uh, of, uh, isometries in order in order to be able to perform this integral in order to be able to go from uh, psi psi star uh, to correlation functions uh, I, I think we need to have uh, some uh, uh, well some inflaton and hence some bre some minimal breaking of conformal invariants that's why I'm not sure if uh, if um, well doing bootstrap, uh, you know, conformal bootstrap uh, for cosmological correlates is useful, but, but I have a worry that it uh, um, sort of uh, uh, misses the, some crucial point okay. about... This is a, so, so sorry, to, this is really interesting. I just want to, we've talked a lot, so this is not fair of me, but I still want to understand better. So, um, like, I, know, I understand that you want to postpone the more non-perturbative stuff like that we learned that this decays. I mean, that's one of the things we, that is robust from our, all our understandings. And part of that has to do with this fact about entropies that at least the, I mean, the description gets more and more precise at later and later times um, for that reason. And also just in terms of the nuts and bolts of string theory, we see this, this metastability, right? Now you're making a conjecture that's sort of like that, but more at the level of what you just said, which was field theory, right? Um, and but yes, yes. And you're but you're, okay, good. So your your conjecture is based well, not on field theory. It's pertur more like perturbative gravity. I want to say, right? Oh, sorry, I'm sorry. Yeah, with gra uh, yeah with gravity. Um, uh, right. So. Um, and your reasoning. I, I don't understand what the conjecture is. Can you repeat the conjecture? Well, you see, that I, I, I well, maybe we shouldn't call it conjecture. Maybe it's my existential worry. Uh, but uh, uh, what but, is uh, the worry? I, I'm, I'm missing the point. Yeah, Sorry. let, let the, me try. I think gravity. I, I need the time. I need a field to define the time to define a surface. So isn't it the triviality? What is the concept? Well, you, you, you could think that uh, that no, because uh, you could you could argue in the following way: uh, that first, let's compute this wave function, and this wave function uh, it's an object that lives in some uh, three-dimensional Euclidean CFT. So there is no more time. Eh? There, we took we took time to infinity. Okay, first that's that's the first order of limit that we're taking. And then, in, and then we just take the CFT and we can compute psi, psi star, you know, insert a bunch of operators and take an integral over five. So there is no more time in, in this problem. Time disappeared in some clever holographic way. Okay? So why, why does this fail? Uh, I think that that should fail. And this that is not going to give you well, inflationary correlators. This is going to give you just the sitter ones. If you want inflationary, you have to deform. But, but I don't species. think that the sitter correlators exist in the presence of gravity. But maybe they, nobody computed them. Nobody ever, people who try to compute them failed. But it doesn't mean that they do not exist. Oh, they fail because of IR divergences. Because in perturbation theory now, if you try to do this in the bulk, 
you run into problem that Mirdad brought up. Where, where are you putting your correlators? You need to define time and then you can fix some random gauge to define time. And that I think leads to IR divergences that is not so surprising because you're doing some sort of random thing. I mean, you pick some uh, gauge, you know, what's your gauge? G00 equal one, I know what's your gauge. Then you compute, you get IR divergences because you're computing some objects that are not supposed to be well defined. So, but, but, but there should be an, an avatar of this failure uh, in, in this um, uh, DSCFT approach. And, and that's that, uh, Merdad, did I explain myself uh, better? Yeah, maybe. Well, I guess <laughs> I wasn't thinking much about the SCFT, but. Yeah, but I, I mean, you are. I, I, maybe I understand the general theme, kind of. Yeah, well, I, I know. Also, I should there should be should be somebody moderating. But sorry, is the claim oh, sorry, 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 I can sorry. talk about this issue forever. <laughs> okay, so can, the, just can I quickly ask? Master. Can I quickly ask a clarification? Are you saying that because you know the IR divergences for the massless graviton are not under control yet by anybody's uh, calculation? Well, I think they are under control in the presence of uh, inflaton field and the preferred the time sections. Right, right, but, but in the not under in control in the absence of, of that, and uh, as they shouldn't be. Okay, okay. So, so then you're making a prediction that some correlators of the stress energy tensor and the putative dual, which anyway, who knows if it, that should have some pathology. That's what you're saying. Is that what you're saying? Yes. Well, yes. Yeah, but but the, let's but be I careful. Correlators uh, at the level of the wave function, I think everything is fine. Yeah. So the, once we uh, try to go to inflation, the, the pathology would appear okay. probably if you try to compute the correlator, right? Because you'd have to put it on different slices, and uh, you'd see that. I don't know, maybe the, the integral is not well defined, right? Yeah, you see, naively you Okay, okay, where, whereas, whereas, whereas an, if it were a CFT, the stress energy tensor core, say low point ones anyway, are dictated by the CFT structure and... Um, no, but I think sorry, that but the... Eva, you understand, inflationary correlators are not correlation functions of stress tensor in a CFT dual to the wave function, right? Yeah, I, know, where, I know, I know, I know, I know, but you want to see... You know it better than anybody. It's, there is no object like this in ADS CFT, no natural objects in, in the ADS CFT analogy, like what... No, I, I totally agree, I totally agree. Um, uh, but, but, well, okay, um, I, yeah. I guess you need to put, uh, compute this uh, TT two-point function in arbitrary manifolds, and then you would see that if you try to sum over all of them, you'd run into trouble. Yeah, you see, like, like you would think that if you do this DSCFT philosophy, you already don't have any, you know, any arbitrary manifolds, everything is pushed to the boundary. But, mm -hmm. but you should see, you see, the reason, the reason okay, I, I'm bragging about all this is that it seems to me that the approach that uh, Costas uh, uh, is suggesting, it's a little bit against the bootstrap philosophy. Because what is bootstrap philosophy? Uh, is that you, you go to a physical observable and then you demand some set of properties that the physical observable should satisfy, okay? Some fundamental physical properties, unitarity, symmetry, and then you bootstrap it from there. Instead, what Costas is suggesting is, well, let's take some other remedial object that's not an observable, let's bootstrap that, doesn't even have to exist that remedial object. The way, if you like, the wave function of the universe has UV divergence. It's not even UV finite, as it shouldn't be. It's not, it's not an observable. Take that object, bootstrap it, that doesn't have to be well defined. And then from that, in some perturbation theory, we can go to you know, an object of interest. It's, well, it, it, it's an interesting program. I mean, I'm not saying, I'm just saying that it's not for some uh, idealized theorist, uh, it, 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 it lacks, you know, the, the, the whole point of bootstrap, where you go direct to the physical observer that you sure exists. Again, there's a question that Eva is posing, that non-perturbatively in inflation, we can never be sure that something is. But, but I think that that's, uh, you know, different order of, uh, of precision. I think it's at the same it level as, let's say, any post-forcibly young meals versus QCD. Okay, clearly for the real work, we're interested in QCD. We're not interested in N equals force being young meals, but some pieces of QCD we can compute by doing N equals force being young meals. And uh, if, in a sense, getting into QCD, we have to go via N equals four and then uh, deform and, and, and all that, okay, it's, uh, that's the route to the, to the answer. 
doesn't make uh, Mr. Senikos far less, less interesting. It also doesn't make uh, the question of real world uh, QCD completely independent either. Yeah. But yeah. the, I thought I thought the problem here is that in the QCD example, the difference is if you like toward the bottom of the throat, toward the IR of the field theory. Here, the the issue is toward what would be this boundary that actually gets infected by decays of all sorts and means that the theory isn't really a CFT um, at a level that's not the same as oh some relevant deformation. Um, it's really. Well, it, I, Maybe it is. My point was that it's just, I, I, I've never seen a statement directly about, you see, let, let me say why I think there is an interesting problem that, okay, I'm, I'm trying to solve, but maybe nobody else should be thinking about it. Uh, the problem is the following. At the level of field theory, uh, field theory in the sitter without gravity, there are two CFTs. To any field theory in the sitter, we can um, correspond to conformal field theories. One that is related to the wave function, and the other one that is re just related to correlation function. Correlation function of field theory give you, defined for you, some Euclidean conformal field theory that lives on the boundary. So at the level of field theory, there are two CFTs. So now, we weekly, we turn on gravity and introduce an inflaton. So what happens to these objects? They, they see the correlation function CFT, as Costa said, that's pretty much understood. That in, it gets deformed in conformal perturbation theory. I think that there should be some statement of that sort to what happens to the CFT that's defined by correlation function. But I've never seen that statement. Never, no, nobody ever made that statement. What, well, what sorry, happened? Sorry, could, sorry, sorry, could you or Costas explain why, why it's simpler than what I said, not about non-perturbative versus less non-perturbative but you know this happening toward like it's a it's a mistake to try and just wick rotate ADS and ADS CFT to the sitter we all know why it's it's you know the sitter is only meta stable and the reason is you can't just rotate the fluxes and all that but um, what that corresponds to in this language is you know if you even if you tried to do that it would be the UV that you're infecting right um, and and that's just you know, that's as you know, TT bar is an exception to this, but usually we have trouble um, understanding what's going on if we start adding irrelevant deformations. But Victor, so, so are you saying though that still it's fine if you just do it perturbatively in the irrelevant deformations? Is that how I should think of your question? Well, yeah, I, I again, if we think about the wave function, I think it's fine. Uh, say perturbatively, but also the level of symmetries. Like we can track how you know, the sonority continuation, yeah. Well, that brings us back to the discussion we had with, uh, with Enrica. Okay, uh, now bulk unitarity, even at the level of the wave function, is encoded in some completely different way as bulk unitarity in ADS, right? So this, these things get deformed and, uh, and yes, yes but, but at the level of symmetries, we understand what happens. Uh, at the level of symmetry, right. like say, but, okay. but I think that to, to diagnose the, the pathology that Eva is uh, pointing out, first you need to find the rules, and then within the rules of the putative CFT, you prove such object doesn't exist. Exactly. But we don't exactly. understand the rules yet, so that's why we're playing with Yeah, and I think there are different levels here. of us not understanding the rules. One is just because of uh, this weak rotation, if you like, and you know what unitarity means now, etc. But then I was just trying to point out that at the level of, if we want to boost up correlation functions, which I know at least some people are thinking about doing it, we are even at step below. We don't even know what this object is like. Where does it live? Does it live in CFT deformed by weakly relevant operator or something yeah. else? I mean, nobody ever made that statement. Wait, so, so, sorry, can I just ask one more time and then I'll shut up. You keep saying weakly relevant. I think I'm confused about whether it's relevant or irrelevant. You keep saying relevant. Why is it relevant? Ah, yeah, even, well, uh, yeah, yeah, that's, uh, well, it's close to marginal, right? Because there is some, and S minus one is close to one. So that, that's one small parameter that we have in that story. So, yeah, yeah so but it can be a good go. The, that's all. I mean, if the CST lives lives in the, in the UV, then uh, relevant. It's it's it is a relevant operator that corresponds to slow roll. It's an irrelevant operator, <laughs> right? Uh, I mean, 
In, in other words, it, it, it changes the boundary. It changes, it, sorry, sorry. In, in other words, it changes what's going on toward the boundary of the, right? So that that's, you know. It you're, you're, the idea. you're driven towards, so the future is just pure the center in this, uh, in, in this wait, approach. Wait. Sorry, so why the is it future? future? But that's not, you see, that already takes us away from inflation, right? No, that's, yeah, that's. Yeah. No, 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 sure. But no, inflation, no, no. So you go with the union, that's... something terrible happens. Right, right? exactly, <laughs> exactly. <laughs> exactly. You go to the UV, something, I don't find it terrible, something quite no, different. No, no, of course you have to, <laughs> you, you have to add your relevant operators to exit from that phase. Uh, that, absolutely true. But if, if I want to understand, it's just separate the inflationary phase from the rest. You can start from uh, a CFT and a UV, you perturb with a relevant deformation, and then you go to the infrared fixed point. Then the inflationary period is the infrared region. So then you can just look from the infrared, you can compare with what you can calculate independently, just using in and correlators. So you find exactly, exactly the same answers, but just using your formal perturbation theory. And then you can use universality. You can say you're going to replace the UV part with some other theory, which flows to the same, the same infrared fixed point. And then this other theory would include the transition to, uh, you know, reheating and hardening bank and, 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 and so on. That, 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 that's the philosophy. Okay, I, I see better what you're saying now. I, I still am very worried about just blindly rotating the, the picture, but now I understand what you're saying. Thanks, Kostya. Guys, yeah, uh, uh, it was an interesting discussion, but uh, we are uh, like 15 minutes uh, behind schedule. So maybe maybe we can uh, go back to it uh, tomorrow. Uh, because yes, uh, let's uh, wrap up and 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 you can use Sokoko or or Slack if you yeah. So everything will be open, including this room actually. So it will be open. So if you want to continue, that's okay also. Okay, thank you, thank you everybody. See you tomorrow. If anyone wants to ask, is